So what is up guys, Nick here, helping you to master your technology and welcome to my best smartphone awards for 2022. Now in this episode, I'm gonna talk to you about phones I reviewed, experienced and think are the best phones I've used this year so far. And these are gonna go on my top of the year. Now we'll begin by talking about a phone that, this is like the only phone on the list that is not a higher end phone, mid or mid range phone here. And that's gonna be the Google Pixel 6a. Now, why do I put this here? Because I think it stands out as a really good value this year. If you're looking for a phone that's under $500, it comes in around 449, and it just gives you a premium Pixel, you know, even 7, 6-like design here. And it, it just feels really modern, up to date. It's got its own unique look. And when you compare it to something like Apple's iPhone SE, it just feels leaps and bounds better than that for the money. You don't get the smoothest display on the market, you don't get the best cameras on the market, but at least you get Google's tried and true AI system, and it's gonna give you nearly premium results for not a premium price. Also, you get an ultra wide angle, good video performance, it's really well supported, it gets all the updates, all that good stuff and overall good battery life. It just stands out as a really good option. I tried Samsung's A series this year. It was pretty buggy, pretty laggy. So I really like the Pixel 6a in the mid range category. Now at number four, and some people are not gonna like that I'm placing it here, but I'm gonna tell you why in a minute, is the Galaxy S22 Ultra. I was debating putting the Z Flip 4 here, but now nah, the S22 Ultra just has a little bit better experience here overall. Now, the S22 Ultra, you know, is always gonna be that phone or the S line is always gonna be that phone best from Samsung. Problem this year though, is this phone got too warm for me most of the time, and it actually launched a little bit buggy. So throughout, you know, the months it has improved, Samsung has updated the performance, but when I first got it, it was kind of annoying. So I would say overall, the, the experience of this phone, not the best battery life out there, amazing features it's like everything you want in terms of the feature set but it reminds me of like a car that has all the features but it has horrible gas you know like it doesn't have the best battery life out there so that really hampered the experience and again just too warm sometimes for me but what i really loved about it and why it's making the list of best of 2022 is the camera system you can zoom ridiculously far results are amazing it's like the most versatile mainstream camera out there if you're looking for zoom this is the phone for you video is strong you got 8k performance of course if you're doing productivity and you just want everything in the kitchen sink everything in one phone samsung still doing that best with the s pen right in the body big screen i mean this thing is a true monster of a device so that goes in at number four now, number two or number two number three is gonna be the Google Pixel 7 Pro. And I know a lot of people are gonna knock me, why are you putting the Pixel 7 Pro in front of the S22? Are you crazy? No, I'm not. And the reason why is because it's been a more consistent performer than the S22 this year for me. Not saying it's the overall better feature pack phone and some people don't like the vanilla experience, but I will tell you, I like the updated camera bar. I like the look of the Pixel 7 Pro. The experience is buttery smooth. It does have an incredibly fast performance. And yes, the Tensor is not as quick as the Snapdragon, but in real world performance, it's optimized so well, you won't be able to tell for most of the time. So Pixel 7 Pro, the camera has been incredible day to day. And then they have the Pixel Watch, which gave you a little bit more of an ecosystem to work with. You got macro mode, you can zoom much further here. The Pixel 7 Pro definitely makes it in my list it's just a beautiful premium phone and i think the value is here too as well you know the pixel 7 pro usually comes in well under the price of the s22 ultra which would probably be its most main competitor and it even comes in much lower than the iphone and it's it also wasn't so hard to get like the iphone 14 pro and pro max like that so really good display it got brighter than prior pixels which is something i really care about Battery life was good, not great, but it was pretty good overall. Good standby time on this as well. And I like the security enhancements that you get by getting a Pixel. You do get you know a little bit more with that M2, that Titan M2 
And then also you do get updates, you know, regular, and you're going to get the latest Android updates right when they come out. So that's pretty cool. Like that Google Pixel 7 Pro overall. So that one goes in at number three, two pixels on the list this year. Now, number two, and people are going to be like, well, what's number one then <laughs> is the iPhone 14 Pro Max. This phone has been one of my mains since it came out. Super smooth day to day. The phone, you know, just performs incredibly well with the A16 CPU. Camera is stupid reliable. We all know that. Got a great macro mode, incredible at taking people photos. Raw mode is available. Cinematic is excellent. It looks like a movie on this phone. I mean, you can't really, you can improve it, but like at this point, you're just, you're just playing with luxury. Like when you're, can upgrade the camera because it's already so good that at this point most people don't even need anything more now on the front facing camera it's also awesome it was improved as well do really appreciate that i like the new space black colorway that came this year bigger camera housing but apple has knocked this one out of the park and you could see why with the dynamic island the all new feature set up there really just gives it a new look and if you look at once again, Apple has found a way to separate themselves from these Androids with their punch holes with the dynamic island. Apple doesn't want to look like an Android phone and they've done it again. They don't really look like an Android phone. I know somebody's going to find a Huawei or some Samsung. They had a you know pill cut out and be like, well, look at this. Look at this phone right here. I'm talking about phones that are available, you know, that most people are buying. Most people are buying phones that have punch holes like this, you know, on the Android side. And if you get an iPhone, it looks like that. So that's different. And of course, when it comes to the battery life, the iPhone 14 Pro Max is the best of these big phones. It, this thing just lasts and lasts and lasts. And that is critical because when you are out and about and you're using these big honking phones, you want them to last. That's why you're getting a big honking phone is for them to last. So of this year, the 14 Pro Max has lasted the longest for me. Now it's to me, the 13 Pro Max was a little bit more impressive but the 14 Pro Max was up there. And of course we can go on and on about software, but at this point we already know it's down to personal preference. What do you want here? Now, lastly, I'm gonna mention a couple others after this, but the number one phone this year for me and gets the top award is the Galaxy Z Fold 4. Now, a lot of people are gonna disagree. Why would you put that niche phone at number one? And it's not about being niche, it's about you know the Samsung Galaxy Z Fold 4 I think is one of the most improved phones of the year when you consider you know foldables it's, it's a market that's people they're still trying to crack into but it's the most usable foldable samsung yet and it finally feels like a proper smartphone that you can use even though it's still a foldable it has great multitasking and it just kind of has everything the s22 ultra has but a wider screen you can use the s pen like the s22 ultra yeah you can't put it in the body the zoom is not quite as good, but it still has zoom. It basically has everything these phones have, but more and better multitasking. And, you know, it finally has like a more premium feel versus those weak initial builds of the Galaxy Z Fold. And it has really good battery life. Just overall, it's a very usable phone. And it really impressed me this year, the Z Fold 4. So it makes my top pick. That doesn't mean that it's the top pick for everybody. It just means it feels like the most exciting phone that launched this year in terms of, you know, just being different and still playing at the top of the game. The 14 Pro Max almost made it there, but it just still feels so similar to the 13 Pro Max. The Z Fold 4 just plays a little bit different this year. So these are my top smartphone picks for 2022. These are the awards. Now, if you are wondering, are you kidding me? Four Android phones on there. Where is the 14 Pro? the smaller one, and I'm not putting the 14 Pro here because it's essentially the same as the 14 Pro Max, so it kind of slots in there as well. I also wanted to make a quick mention of the Z Flip 4. That's another great phone this year. It was kind of boring, you know? It didn't really change much from the Z Flip 3, and there's a lot of people, you know, ushering sentiments like, oh, well, who wants a flip phone again? Didn't we have that error already? I'm not seeing the same excitement for the Flip as I am for folding devices like the, well, proper folding devices like the Z Fold 4. We're probably gonna see a Pixel Fold and stuff like that. Z Flip 4 is kind of just a mainstream option for flipping and, you know, TikTok and social media creation, stuff like that. So 
it didn't quite make my list. I don't hear a lot of people talking about this one in the public. 14 plus could not make it here even because a lot of people were not happy. So these are my top picks here in 2022. If you agree, let me know with a thumbs up down below. If you disagree, that's fine too. I know there's no one plus here on this list. There's no other brands on this list. So if there's other brands you thought should have made the top pick, let me know the model, the brand, and the number, whatever that model is, let, it, let us know in the comments. Thumbs up if you enjoyed it. Subscribe if you haven't already. Nick here. Be sure to be well. I'll catch you all in the very next episode. And peace.